G'day, how you going? Ian Apolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. I've got some sizes on my canvas panel there in centimetres and inches, and um, we'll also get some colours going up the screen there so you can pause it and write them down if you want to use the same colours. But you're always welcome to change the colours up a bit, okay? Or even change the way the sky is. I'm just showing you in this tutorial subjects you can put into a painting, all right? So don't get caught in trying to copy every different thing in the same way that I'm doing it, okay? These are just subject matters that you can put into your painting. So come over here. All right, I've penciled in a sky area. Well, I didn't pencil it in because there's nothing there, but the area's there for the sky. So I've got some sort of um, horizon line here. Now, as I penciled it in, I'm realizing now it's a bit deep here. Looks a bit funny, so I'll adjust that as I'm painting it. But I put one of these sort of American style barns in there, those weird shaped ones okay i don't know they've probably got a proper name for them but we don't have them here in australia i've got some distant trees and some field and shrubbery and a fence you've got to have an old rickety fence so we'll start with the sky we'll get the sky mapped in all right i'm going to grab a two inch synthetic brush synthetic brush it's just something that's pretty stiff and i can control how the paint goes and i've got some soft white paint here it's it's just a student white craft paint I call it flow white, but that's not what it's properly called, I don't know. It's just a soft student poster paint, okay? So many people are asking me, how do I make it? Where can I find it? All craft shops, $2 shops, art and craft supplies shops, stationery shops, they all sell this stuff. It's everywhere. We'll get the sky. I better move my coffee so we don't have any foreign objects falling in there. We'll get the sky mapped in, the sky area. It's going to be a subtle sky. I don't want an over dramatic sky in this. But I do want some reasonably real elements in it. So we won't just do a crappy snot sky. We'll put some charisma and effort into it. So we've got that mixed with retarder. So our colours are going to blend beautiful. Now I'm going to go for the phthalo blue red shade. This to me has the red that I'm going to use for the shadow colors in the clouds. And we don't want it too bright, you beginners, okay? I was making my sky so bright when I first started painting. But we'll get this from the top and then we'll pull it down. And if anything, the bottom horizon area is going to be lighter than the top area. Then massage that in, get all this into the woven thread there on this canvas panel because it is a canvas panel it's not paper okay and we've got our sky color there so the next thing i want to do is put the horizon line atmosphere in so i've got some toning gray out of a tube and just some primary red and see that color there i tested it off camera to see if it's going to work and it is so I want to mix this into the sky for the bottom atmosphere. So I know where my horizon line is going to be. So I'm, I've got my brush loaded up and I'm going to flick this from the horizon line and venture out into nothing as I come up to the sky. Pick up some more on my brush. And this is just subtle. You don't want this really bright pink. You don't want it bright grey. You just try and find those tones. Practice. If you've done one that's too dark, well then you'll know you need to lighten it up a bit, because I have too. All right, now I'll just blend that down. So I've got myself a two inch house painting brush from the hardware store, something I always use. And I want to soften that where it's transitioning into the blue sky color. I want to blend that up a bit. I'll... Don't blend the living buggery out of it, all right? Just take your time with your paintings. Some people, think that it's got to be done real quick just take your time all right so we've got it that danced up into the sky color there now it's subtle it's not over dramatic now back down here that color I mix I'm just going to grab the rest of the gray now and put into that because I just want a slight hint of this over the sky so I might put some of it here I'll have my clouds here so See what I'm doing? That sky is wet. I'll just show you on this little bit here. 
Let's grab my blending brush and always, I'm going to blend it long ways as well. Always have a towel or a rag or a cloth, something to wipe the build up on your blending brush. Because you might not see this that much, but this is going to make my Australis clouds pop. Okay, it's just putting some depth in the sky behind them. And that's why I mixed up the grey in the leftover of this colour, because I don't want this colour to clash down here with the polluted horizon line, all right? But this is quite easy to do. Just take your time, work out your layout and what you're going to do. And we've got some dark elements ready for our Australis clouds. Now, for our clouds, I've got some titanium white out of the tube. It's so different to that flowing craft student paint, soft paint. This has got thickness and body to it. Now, we want to put some Australis clouds up there. Now I'm just penciling in my barn shape here and I'll make a traceable for this. You can contact me on Facebook for the traceable and then we'll start doing the rest of this painting. So I've grabbed some forest green and candy yellow light, mixed it up and I've put some white with it to, and a bit of the blue just to get the atmosphere of the sky between us and the distance there. And I don't know, probably I'm gonna have some tree. I want some trees around here, so there's probably not gonna to be too much. I'll just put something here. I'll just put like a, a, a hill over here in the, in the background, let's say like a hill. So I'm just using this filbert brush so we can get some sort of um, not such a smooth edge on the top there. We want it broken up a bit airy fairy. Okay. Now I've mixed up a bit more of that colour, but more on the blue side, and I want to dance, come into the barn a bit so we can bring the barn in front of it. I want to dance in front of it. I'm not going to put the black freckles in this because it's in the distance, all right? And that hill's probably, I'm sort of, I'll come here. So if you can get the sky colour mixed into the, the greenery, let's put an atmosphere between you and it, making it distance. Now I'm going to get a flat brush because they're good for sculpturing in these sharp shapes. I'm going to start with the roof and then the side colours. So I'll damp my brush a little bit. The roof I want a bit lighter than the actual building, so I'm chiselling that onto my flathead brush like that. And... I probably want two values of this, so I'm going to pick up some white because I want a shadowy side and a lighter side. That's a bit too bright there. There we go. So where are we? Just, that's why I like these flathead brushes. You can get the edge of them nice and sharp, making sure that you've moistened your paint a little bit, not too much where it's going to be opaque and this side's lighter than the other side of the roof. That's the only reason why I wanted two different values of that colour. And look how easy that was to brush in with that flathead brush. Okay, so this is just raw sienna dark. Now we'll come up over our hill. That's why I wanted to do those hills first. Get this line in there. I'll turn the brush on its edge because I can get a sharper line there, watch this. And we'll pick up some more and bring the bottom of that roof in. Look at that. The side of a, a flat edged roof is a gable. Now I've grabbed some uh, raw umber and I've just mixed it with that 
raw sienna dark just to get a see a shadowy darker value there this is only small but it's it, it's giving you that bullshit effect so well i want some of this just a little bit toned with darker values as well so i want to sort of taper them in there just like that i'm using my bullshit stick these sticks have a proper name and believe it or not i wouldn't even know what the name of them is so i just call this one me bullshit stick because it helps me add the bullshit effect Okay, now I'm ready for this side and the front side. And I know I'm going to need a shadow under this gable, but I'm going to map it all in first. And I know where my windows are going to be, so I'm, just, I'm not going to prance around and try and paint around that. I'm just going to block all that in now. So I'm looking for a sort of a rusty wood colour. And I ain't no expert on wood, so I've got some of this burnt sienna. And I'll use some raw umber. So as I can mix up another value of that, I'm just seeing if it's going to... Do a darker value I think that'll do me all right so this side will be my dark side let's get the side wall down right down there and you if you'll notice I've mapped in the bottom there as well when I was penciling it in I'll get this nice and steady underneath the eave of the roof there this is the darker value of the the wall color and where's that going down there So we've got a darker value for the side there and I'll pick up the lighter color for the front. Now who can see the mistake I did here? I just noticed it when I looked in the monitor. I'll tell you in a minute, I'm just holding my breath like an idiot as I paint this here. I've just dampened that and watch, it's gonna transfer really nice. Look at that, beautiful. And down here, about there. Yeah, the the eave to the darker side of the roof here is too high. I'm gonna to have to bring that down so it'll be in perspective. I just noticed it, and it looks a bit odd. I'll fix this up. Now this colour and this colour here, I want to go to this colour and scratch into some light detail and the same with that. So I'm going to grab this colour that I've got on the palette, which is down here. And I'm just going to pick up some of the flow white and we just want to see there, just have it scratchy, don't mix it thoroughly. And we'll just get some scratchy, timbery effect into this side just something in that way like that and then I'll do the same to the front so the front was here I'll wet the brush a bit so it's going to move pick up some flow white yeah just marbly like that a bit more now don't worry about coming down here pass it doesn't matter so I want to sort of bring it down just straight down to nothing like that see how easy that is boom leave some darker values there now we'll change up here <clears throat> let's merge that a bit pick up some more on your brush we'll come down here <clears throat> change the brush around just so we're getting some, all those structural value looks in there, okay? Just like that. I've blow dried that because I want to add some shadow and darker values in it now just to make it pop because as you'll notice now, it's looking a bit weird. That's because the shadows aren't there yet. So this is the time where you can have yourself a coffee, sit back and just reflect on what you're doing and analyze it and see how things are going. Always make sure to do that with your art. Don't just get right into it and go, I love it, or, oh, no, it looks like snot. You've got to take your time and analyse things, all right? So just remember that, you beginners. And then I'm going to grab another smaller flat brush, and this is just going to map in the windows and doors. Very easy, but simple and effective as well at the same time, all right? 
Let's get back over here. All right, I've dampened my brush. There's the darkest color here. So I'm gonna add a little bit of black into that, just so as we get something dark. I don't want it just true black if I can help it. So this eave always needs shadow under it. So we'll get this blocked in under there like that. And this bullshit stick helps very good for this. And then I might just pull down the lip a bit. Now over here, this gable needs to be blocked in. So we want the edge pretty much, I'm gonna walk it through there to the edge. And then we'll just map in the thickness of that eave so I don't, I don't want it too thick, I want it about there. About there. So we'll get that one mapped in. And then the same up here. And the same down the side. There we go. I want to put some light on that as well. Okay, now we're going to map in, we'll use that same colour and just map in our windows. So what did I, I had a little square one up here, so let's just make a square window up there. That's good enough, that'll do it. Now we had a door somewhere here, so we want the door following this line here, at the top of it, so pretty big door I suppose, so it was big enough to drive a tractor through and straight down there, straight down there, then we can block it in nice and sharply. These are just simple openings for your barn or shed or shack, whatever it's gonna be. So we'll just put something, cause this has obviously got a, oh, get up there, mezzanine floor inside, a suspended floor inside. So I want a row of windows about here somewhere somewhere about there that'll do it I've just lightened up some paint on my brush mix of these colors I don't want it too bright I'll probably put three panes here so I'll divide that into thirds just to see what that's going to look like something that's not too stark and we'll probably give this some sort of depth as well some sort of frame And this colour, which was the Burnt Sienna, it's not mixed with anything. I'm coming across the bottom of that shadow there. Get it nice and tight. And we just want to render in some sort of shadow on the wall from that eave, just to give it some sort of realistic values as well where are we which color was it <laughs> not that many colors down here on my palette so we want it darkened up here and if anything it's casting a bit of a shadow over our wall there and just to finish this off i'm just grabbing some of the lighter color now and getting some different light and darks within here around the window frame mainly just something to break it up all right i just want to map in the trees around this barn building now and then we'll push in the ground okay so i want to get my block in color so i've got french ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow light and I want to mix up a value of green that'll give me a beautiful blocking foundation, okay? There we go. All right, so I want to keep some air in between these as well. So we'll just come off the page here and get these the shape you want to your trees and just 
put some other shrubberies, trees, wherever. Get some sort of shrubbery up here in the front there. Across the bottom and here. And maybe, I don't know, get one up here somewhere a bit closer. I'm just sort of trying to keep a tree shape there. Just with this. Okay, I've stamped in where I want my trees. Now I want some darker values there. So I'm picking up a bit more French Ultramarine and putting into that mix. Okay, to make it a bit darker. And I'm, you know, like, let's see, I might have to dry this. I want the bottoms dark. So I have dried it because otherwise it's not going to go on crop properly. Now I want the bottoms of these trees and shrubs dark if anything tassel it out and if anything my ground's going to come down like this okay so that's where i'm looking at the the bottom of all this just muck around with some darks here some in here and some up the bottom here all the way up the bottom of this because that's going to be a hill going up there believe it or not All right, so we're pretty much putting some darker values. This is like the old way when you first begin to paint, you're just stamping in a bush and that's it, it's all done. But we're gonna detail this, don't forget, make it look real beautiful and add that bullshit flavor to your painting. Okay, everything's dry. I've got myself an open-ended brush, something that's going to put some like black freckles throughout our Lock in. Try not to have these too blobby. You want them very dotty, not blotty. Now, so we're ready to detail this, but before we do, we've got to put the front foreground on so the detail can sit over it, all right? So I'm gonna go for me forest green, and I've got some cad yellow light there as well. We'll get some of that in there, just to break it up. I don't want it too, too dark. So that's the value I'm looking for there. And we wanna bring this out this way so we're going to block it in with this color okay and then we can put some darker and lighter values in here all right this is just simple but it's easy job for a um, beginner to do and we'll get this scooting up there like that see how we got the darker value so we've actually got that swooping down like that Now I'm gonna have a fence there, I want a rickety fence in this. So I look at it and think, oh, I want some light and darks here. So I'll probably put some darks on the edges and lighten up the valley section here. So for the dark, I'll just use simple, wipe that brush a little bit, forest green out of the tube. And we'll get some some sort of darker values there. How's that working? Get a bit more on your brush, Ian. Maybe I'll have to dry it, but I don't want to dry it really. I just want to scoot up some of these darker. There we go. Get it on there like that and push it into the middle of the painting. All right, I've washed that brush and I'm just picking up the yellow light, the cadmium yellow light. We'll put a bit of water with that so it's gonna flow. And we wanna just blend those elements up there like that. I'm putting it on, right, in the area where I want it. And then I'm gonna slowly Blend it up the field. <sighs> mm. 
Now we'll detail these trees. I'm going to use a small filbert brush and I've got my forest green, my cad yellow light. I've got the burn umber and the cad yellow light and I mixed it up to a caramel colour. All right. So now we want to get our tap in colour for those trees there. So we want to add some cad yellow light to our green to get the flavour we want for those highlights to detail what we've blocked in up there. All right, so I'll start with the forest green. And we'll, I'm just little tiny dots stabbing some foliage in here. And try and keep the bottoms dark. So I'll get this one done. And the tighter, sharper you can get these strokes, the better your tree would look. Now that we've um, detailed it with the forest green, before we go any further, where we need some trunks, we just want to put them in there. So that's a bit too dark, so I'll put some more light on it. I've just got some of the brown and the white on a script liner, just to give some hints of some trunks up here. There we go. Just some hints of some trunks in there. And when we put the other detail in, it'll sink these back appropriately. Okay, everything's dry. Now that burnt umber and the yellow that I mixed, which is like a dead wood colour, I'm just appropriately mixing some of that with the green throughout the foliage. Because what that does, I'll set those trunks back as well. Go and look at the trees as you drive along in the center of the road. They've got brown within it. It's not just a solid green color. And that's what this is putting in there to give it that realistic flavor of greens, okay? All right, we're getting the cad yellow light with some of their forest green mixed into it now. And this is going to highlight our trees Create the shapes that they need and set them back and forth from each other, okay? So let's start with this big tree here. Nice, tiny little dots. Work around those trunks. Leave the darks there, but you want to create foliage in and out of the tree. Sink the trunks back a bit. And if anything, leave the bottoms of sections dark. A nice, fine, sharp. Leave some darks there. You don't want to dot the whole thing in one big solid dot. You want to leave pockets. Okay.
I've left the dark bit there just so as whether the sun's on that side or not. It works for the painting's sake, the science of light and darks. I want to create this edge here of this tree bright and it's going to hover in front of that dark area of the tree behind it which creates sitting it forward and backwards of each other okay and we'll spot in the bottom bits as well where light's hitting it see I'm leaving pockets of dark there now very carefully I've mixed up some black just with a bit of brown because see I want to add some shadow between the structure and the foliage coming in just so it's giving it the right view something's not quite right when this isn't there getting our shadow in there all right we'll put a fence in here now a bit of an old rickety fence and I'm just making use of the paints that's on my palette so I've used the yellow and burnt umber that I mixed for the dead wood color in the trees and I want to get move my coffee out the way I want to get something probably We'll have one there. Probably one here. I'll get them penciled in first or stamped in and then we'll you'll get an idea of where it's going. Okay, so now we'll darken that up with some of the burnt umber. So we can get a shadow side onto these posts. I've dried the posts that I've already put there. And we'll get some kind of um, dark top. And something on this side. Just like that. I'd like to cast a shadow, so what I'll do is I'll leave this ruler at this point there and I'll grab that darker colour on my brush but pull most of it off and I want to just give me a shadow there I'll move my ruler up oh, I should have went from this side first that way <coughs> keep that at that point keep the um, shadows in perspective with the ground and the rest of the picture uh, where's me mark there it is there and this one here now I'm just getting the paint it's not too much on my brush just to fix these up now I've just had that ruler there to get the angle of the shadows now I've just mixed some white into that color and I'm scratching down the other side of the post just to emulate some light hitting it Now just to finish it off, we're getting the lighter value of that fence colour and we'll put some railings in. So we want to come halfway in that post and stop to there. Okay, make these as thick or as thin as you want. I'll put the top one in so you'll know. 
stop it there. I'm finding a flathead brush is really great for this. Okay. Okay, I just had to charge my battery up. I finished all the railings in there and they've, they're going in... inside the middle of the post and coming out and stopping on that edge of that post, okay? And from here, like I'll start in there, I might just add some, I don't know, some weird broken wire or, I don't know, something down here just to give the picture some more... Whatever. Alright, I'm going to put an autograph on here. Okay, we'll just put a frame on that. See how she looks. There we go, a bit of a farmland scenery with a mountain in the back. Subtle sky, but an effective one. Bit of a rickety fence. And just a simple foreground field. Not too shabby, is it? Hope you like this exercise for you beginners out there. Give it a go, mix it up a bit. You don't have to copy every facet that I've done on this um, canvas today it's just subjects you can use or a layout all right so if you like what i've done today tell your friends but if you don't like it tell everybody goodbye good luck and good on you